As sports history fans, we often reminisce about the legends. Willis Reed limping on to the NBA Finals Court, Kurt Schilling's bloody sock, Kerry Strong's courageous dismount, and so many more. These moments often define sports history. But what about the countless injuries that did not become legends or careers that were derailed due to inadequate care? That's where this episode sponsor comes in. Introducing to you, ILP Sports Consultants, your trusted sports injury partner, available 24-7. Brian Maelli at ILP Sports Consultants has over 20 years of experience in the orthopedic and sports medicine industry, and he has worked with athletes across the gamut, from youth to amateurs, professionals, in almost every sport played in the United States of America, accommodating athletes at every stage of their career. This adaptability ensures that ILP services are perfectly tailored to your skill level, no matter where you are in your athletic journey. With ILP, you are in control. Choose the steps that matter most to you. Diagnosis, treatment plan, recovery, or the whole journey. ILP services are tailored to your unique needs. Rushing for care is a common pitfall, leading to future problems. ILP Sports Consultants helps you make the right decisions, ensuring that you receive timely and safe care. And here's the bonus. Brian hosts the Injured List podcast, sharing insights and athlete stories you won't want to miss. Whether you're a concerned parent or grandparent or an athlete yourself seeking guidance, ILP Sports Consultants is your beacon of hope in sports injury management. Visit ILPSports.com today. That's the letters ILPSports.com. ILP Sports Consultants, where your well-being is the priority and your recovery is the mission. Choose ILP Sports Consultants for a healthier sports journey, helping you get back in the game the smart way. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hi, folks. Welcome again to another episode of Pro Football in the 1970s. I'm your host, Joe Zagorski, and in this episode, we're going to remember Chester Markle's incredible rookie season. Now, by the time of the 1972 NFL player draft, the Green Bay Packers, in particular their head coach, Dan Devine, had had enough. Devine's first year at the helm of the Packers would end up with a poor 4-8-2 record. There were plenty of reasons for this one of the most prominent of which came with the team's inability to successfully convert field goals. A total of nine different place kickers attempted at least one field goal from 1968 to 1971 for the Packers. That's a lot. There was simply no consistency in the team's kicking position to be found. Many people would voice their displeasure over Green Bay's kicking woes, and they asked themselves during this time, How tough could it be to find a kicker? Well, it took several years, but Green Bay and Dan Devine in particular finally found a good place kicker. An unlikely young man by the name of Czeslaw Boleslaw Markle hailed from the foreign nation of Poland in the small town of Opol. He became known to many in America as Chester Markle, and he had one God-given gift. He could kick a football. Markle migrated to America and attended a tiny school in Michigan called Hillsdale College. It was during his college years where pro scouts began to look at Markle. Kicking a football is a great evener of talents in the world of the sport. You can either kick a football or you cannot. Bonus points go to your name if you can kick a football in a variety of different outdoor wintry elements such as wind, rain, freezing rain, and snow. Markle had proven that he could succeed despite the harsh weather in college. Uh, Moreover, he could succeed with long-distance kicks, something that pro scouts were and still are most desiring to see. By the time that he was drafted by the Packers in the second round of the 1972 NFL Draft, Dan Devine had already hailed him as the best place kicker in all of college football and the ordained starting kicker in Green Bay from the moment that he signed his rookie contract. Devine's declaration on Markle's greatness was proof that pro scouts were able to go to virtually every small college in America to find a player with the talent necessary. Markle was one of the uh, 
growing number of soccer-style kickers who were populating the league in the 1970s. Today, that's all we have. But back then, it wasn't. When he was growing up as a kid in his native Poland, he probably never even once thought about making a living kicking in American football somewhere in America. That is exactly what happened. Markle's 1972 season was the stuff of legend. A virtual nobody coming to a team with a losing record from the previous year, then not only leading that team in scoring, but leading the entire league in scoring. Pretty remarkable. Markle finished the 72 season with 48 field goal attempts, and he converted on 33 of those. He also converted on 29 of 29 extra points. Perfect record. His total scoring output in 1972 was 128 points, which was 7 points more than Bobby Howfield of the New York Jets, who finished 2nd in the league in scoring with 121 points. Mark Holt got off to a very good start in 1972, and so did the Packers. He kicked four field goals in Green Bay's 26-10 opening day victory at Cleveland. A couple of weeks later, he kicked three field goals to lift the Packers over the defending world champion Dallas Cowboys 16-13. Markle booted the winning points in the next two contests, a 20-17 win over Chicago and a 24-23 victory at Detroit on Monday Night Football. Markle certainly had a hand, or a foot, in Green Bay's 4-1 record to begin the 1972 season. Uh, but the good times would not last, however. The Packers lost a 10-9 heartbreaker to the Atlanta Falcons in Week 6. Markle scored all nine of the Packers' points in that game, but when he attempted his fourth field goal in that game with less than a minute to play, he missed it. Yes, it was raining and it was windy, but pros don't make excuses for their mistakes. Markle certainly did not make any excuses. Instead, he patiently studied the craft of place kicking more diligently, and he silently affirmed to not miss another game-winning kick. For the remainder of the 1972 season, Markle may have missed some more kicks, but he connected on many more. The Packers would enjoy three separate game-winning streaks during the 1972 season, and Markle's role was prominent in each of those victories. He scored a total of 72 points in the second half of the year, including in a couple of bone-chilling outdoor games in Green Bay and in Minnesota. Thanks largely to Mark Holzek's efforts, the Packers won 10 games in 1972, which was good enough for them to win the NFC Central Division title. Naturally, winning a league title, league scoring title, would have been even nicer had Green Bay won a Super Bowl in 1972, but that did not happen. Nevertheless, the Packers, and in particular Chester Markle, made some headlines once again in 1972, and good headlines at that. Now, for the trivia question for this episode, who was Chester Markle's placement holder during the 1972 season? Once again, thanks a lot for joining us on this episode of Pro Football in the 1970s. I'm your host, Joe Zagorski, and I look forward to chatting with you again in the next episode. Take care. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude. And I hope that you enjoyed this recent episode presented by the Sports History Network and were able to learn some good old-fashioned sports history knowledge nuggets. I started the Sports History Network back in 2020 with the mission to help podcasters find a community of like-minded sports history nerds, as well as helping aspiring podcasters to start their own shows. We have a little bit over 30 shows on the network right now covering all sorts of sports history, but as far as I'm concerned, we're just at the toothpick in the ocean moment, you know, that can't even figure it out because there's so much more coming. We wanted to create the ultimate headquarters for sports yesteryear starting with Podcast Network and our website, but we're going to continue to move into other mediums as well. And here's the cool part, because we want you to be part of our team. So if you're interested in starting your own podcast, or maybe being a guest on one of our shows, or who knows, maybe even writing an article for us over on the website. Seriously, all you got to do is reach out to us on the contact page over at sportshistorynetwork.com.
You can be as technologically savvy as a Neanderthal tapping on a stone trying to figure out this whole hieroglyphics thing back in the day. Again, it doesn't matter, because even if you don't understand the whole podcast space, we have a production team that can pretty much help you out with doing everything. All you gotta do, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com, head to the contact page, fill it out. That message goes right to me, and I'll reach out to you as soon as I can. But for now, dude, I'm through if you're through.